a valid reason why I did it is because uh, I, I was trying to find uh, some information about this monitor here, the Lilliput H7S, an ultra bright 4K on camera monitor. And I couldn't find it. So that was the main reason why I decided to make a, a review here for other guys to help out before you buy something. So the, the first positive surprise is it comes with a very solid case. Inside we have a user guide and we have a HDMI, mini HDMI to HDMI and that's pretty much it. It comes with a cable that, to be honest, I, 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 I have no idea what it is. I mean, this is a mini jack, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Solid build. This monitor, I bought it around, uh, I think, uh, 300 US dollars. So my expectations were not really high. To be honest, uh, I bought uh, a different monitor, the Feel Good monitor LAT7, which is more or less in the same price range. Uh, but it was not really compatible with my camera, which is a Kinefinity uh, Mavo S 6K, the S35. And uh, the Feel World, it gave me a green cast. So apparently it was not compatible. So this is an ultra bright monitor, 1000 800 nits, which is what I was looking for, a 7-inch monitor with a very high and ultra-bright nits. Um, and it comes with two NPF batteries at the back. And the inputs are, this model has the HDMI in, the HDMI out if you want to loop out things, and the SDI in, SDI out, and a USB for, a, for uh, I suppose, firmware or LUTs. For LUTs, definitely for LUTs. We're going to come back to LUTs a little bit later on. On the top, there are some buttons. Turn it on. Oh, the input, you can change SDI or to HDMI. Some preset for the focus picking. And here is how you navigate the menu. So this, you go with the menu exit menu and then up up and down you know choosing your parameters also uh, AEC in if you want to come connect it with uh, with power big disappointment if I compared with the previous model the, the previous monitor actually that I had at Phil world lot 7 is that it's not a touch screen so it felt a bit old school you know touching blah, blah, blah. but it's fine I mean at the end of the day you know it, 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 you can live with it. Let, let's take a look at the menu. Here's how you turn it on. So it's not connected with the camera right now, but don't worry, we're gonna just take a look at the menu. So the menu is here. You can go through the brightness, and then they have a different aspects of different brightness, contrast, saturation, tint, sharpness, gamma, HDR, and then the LUTs. For the LUTs right now, I tried to import some LUTs and I couldn't. And then I had to go through the manual and in the manual they were saying that uh, you need uh, some specific uh, way of uh, <laughs> importing and uh, specific specifications, let's say. Uh, like it's 17, 17, 17, data format BGR, and the table format BGR as well. So uh, I found it a bit complicated. It's not really plug and play. And they also offer some software in case if uh, your LUTs are not in, into, seven, you know, the, if your LUTs doesn't follow your specifications, then you have to go through those. Uh, yeah. Then they have center area, aspect, safety marker. 
you know, scan, aspect, display scan, check field. Here is the picking, which, as I said, we can on this button which works pretty much okay. False colors, very important. Exposure. Uh, histogram. The volume for the audio, and then some general settings. Nothing really crazy, but uh, yeah, I think it works okay. It's just, you know, the annoying part of pressing the buttons. This is pretty much it. So, uh, I had also an issue with the quality, the picture quality. Uh, my first shoot was in a green screen, and uh, I realized some terrible bonding. So, I was like really concerned about my camera. I thought, okay, this is a, I, I was recording in 444, 6K, uh, so bonding was like, what the hell. Um, so I, I realized it was not the camera, it was the band that was coming from the monitor. I suppose it's a quality thing. I didn't really dig much on it so far. It's a little bit annoying, especially if you have exposure and if you're doing green screen, you know, and you have these lines and then, okay, you're not sure if it's like, is it like that or what's the... <laughs> What, I, what am I recording? And uh, the Kinefinity doesn't have a dedicated monitor, so <laughs> I have to rely on this. As pros, I will put the price. Uh, I will put uh, the build quality. I will put the brightness. Uh, the inputs and the outputs. Uh, and as cons, I will definitely put this uh, quality, the picture quality, especially because of the banding. Uh, and that there is no touch screen, not a deal breaker, but in a modern world, you know, it will be more convenient. Battery, I think I went around in one hour, but I didn't test it with two, so maybe it's two. Depending, of course, what kind, the type of batteries you're gonna use. Mine was uh, NPF, uh, Five, uh, 750, 750. Also something very important, I bought it from Lilliput uh, in Europe, UK, and this was the most amazing uh, delivery on time. I ordered it on, um, I think on, on Tuesday, and uh, on, on Wednesday I had it already midday, so I it, it was an unbelievable delivery and because I told them I wanted fast and I got it really fast. Thank you very much. That's it.